Hi, so today I wanted to go over uh, the neckband finish for the t-shirt um, and I hope it'll help you. I know that knit, knit neckbands are not super fun <laughs> to do for most people, me included, um, but I've done my best to try and make it as straightforward as possible. So this is just like a portion of the t-shirt. Um, I've pressed the seams. Um, you can see there's no actual front or back, but the neckline is the right shape and size. Um, I've also um, sewn, this is the neckband piece, I've sewn it together at the um, center back here. Now, um, I would say um, it's very, very important to make sure you include those notches, but do them really little, like just tiny, tiny snips. So um, you don't have to construct this on the serger. Um, ironically, like I usually try and show people, demonstrate on the domestic machine because usually people are scared of using their... Um, you know, I don't want to assume that he'll have a serger. However, I feel like with knits, it's actually um, more daunting to do a neckband on the serger because it like, you know, chops away um, than it is to do it on a domestic machine using a zigzag. So I'm actually going to demonstrate it on the serger today. The procedure is exactly the same on a domestic machine, except you would use um, a narrow zigzag. Um, a stitch length of about one and a half and a stitch width of about two to two and a half, something like that. Um, so anyway, um, we're going to take this neckband, it was um, sewn right sides together, and we need to fold it in half with the wrong sides together, like this. Now, just a little tip, it can cause a bit of a bump on one side like that, so what can be helpful is to just um, like find the center of it, kind of just by folding it in half and just eyeballing it basically, and then um, clipping into your... Um, this is if you have a four thread overlock, um, just giving a little snip here um, through that first, uh, through that, I guess it's the right needle. Um, and what that does is it allows you to um, offset the seam allowances like that. So now I'm going to fold it in half with the wrong sides together and just give it a little press. Um, I'm... Um, this fabric does actually mark when you um, press it. You can see there it's a bit shiny. Um, I just, I don't want to use a press cloth just because I want to show you how to do it more clearly and the press cloth will kind of obscure that. So um, excuse the shiny iron marks that it's going to make. Um, but normally with this fabric, I've already sewn up um, a couple of... Um, Twiles in this fabric, I used a press cloth to press it. Um, I like to use plenty of steam. And then um, it's coming around to the other side. So really being quite careful to line up these raw edges. Using a lot of steam and they're just like, um, oh, my iron has this, like the spray button is really close to the where you iron and it always is squirting out little <laughs> random bits of water everywhere so um there we go now at this point oh look see i didn't do a good job there so i'm gonna just try and fix that um at this point if you're feeling nervous what you can do is you can run a zigzag stay stitch just around these raw edges just close to the edge just to hold this together so you don't have like three like um bits flapping around that you only have two um but um i'm not going to do that um so i'm just checking i've got three notches and i've got this seam here i'm just gonna get rid of these threads Okay, I'm gonna take you over to my serger and show you how I like to clip it. Okay, so when I said I was gonna take you to my machine, I lied. <laughs> I'm gonna keep you here at my um, at my ironing board. Anyway, um, so here we have that neckline. Now, um, many t-shirt many t-shirt patterns have you like um, quarter uh, your neckband and put it into the neckline. However. Um, 
the front neckline is always bigger than the back. You can see it quite clearly on here, even though this is not a scoop neck, this is like a crew neck, um, but you can see it's still bigger. So if I divide it into four and then um, ease it in, you can see that I'll have to ease a whole lot more on this front than at the back. And that doesn't make any sense to me. So um, I don't do that. Um, this is the, this uh, seam on the um, neckband corresponds with a center back seam. So, um, you know, usually I'm all about like matching everything up just perfectly. In this case, I'm actually not going to do that quite. I'm just going to move it over. There's a wet spot for my iron. Um, and that's just because I like to cover stitch it to top stitch it down. And my cover stitch does not like going over very thick, chunky bits. So anyway, I'm going to offset that just very slightly. Um... I'm using clips, which to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of, um, but um, I'm really scared <laughs> if I use pins when I'm gonna serge, I'm gonna run over it and ruin my serger knife. So there we are. So I'm basically matching the center back seam up. And then I'm gonna find this, uh, this notch here, which matches with the shoulder seam. And I am gonna match that one exactly. Just um, pop a clip on it. Same on the other side. There's this shoulder seam notch. Oops, help if I put it on camera for you. There we go. Um, shoulder seam. There we go. And then the final notch is um, here for the center front of your um, neckline. It was, it is marked on the pattern piece, but it's a little bit hard to see because it's on the fold. Um, if you don't have it marked, fold it in half now and mark it. It's really important. Okay, so for the serger, that's all I do. Um, and now I really am going to take you over to my machine and show you how I hold it. Okie dokie, so here we are on my serger. Um, by now you've already sewn a few seams, so you should have your differential feed dialed in nicely and stuff. Um, just remember that you always want to keep these three um, raw edges aligned. So you can see I just didn't do a fantastic job of pressing that perfectly there so I'm just going to realign it and I'm just going to start off um, a little bit before that center back um, I like to sew it um, so the shirts inside out um, and then the neckband is sitting on top of the um, shirt it's a bit hard to reach around this uh, camera here but anyway there we go sorry my arms in the way. Okay, so I'm just going to get it started. It's really important that you make sure everything is kind of kept out of the way and that you're only sewing three layers. Okay, so I've gotten that first bit sewn. It's kind of anchored down. Um, now you can see I have a bit of easing to do here. So I'm always like kind of rearranging the fabric so I don't <laughs> slice a hole. And then I can see I've got my three layers here. And I've got my clip here. So I'm just going to give it a little stretch, just enough to um, stretch out um, this neckline so it is um, flat but not stretched. So, um, and then I kind of get my fingers and hold it in the middle there and kind of I'm actually just pushing it down onto the serger so I can see that I've got my three layers here. I can even just pull that neckline back just a tiny bit, make sure I've got all three layers aligned. Everything's flat and I'm just going to sew that much. Just like, I just sewed like an inch, like a couple of centimeters. Okay, same thing here. So making sure everything's aligned. Everything, I've got my three layers. So just go really slowly, like that's the trick. I'm going to make sure this is all flat here. Okay, that's it. Now I'm going to take that clip out. Before I take the clip out, I'm going to just align everything here just flat. Okay. I've got it pressed down with my finger. 
I'm unclipping and then I'm just going to sew over to where that clip was okay okay so here's a little bit of a longer section it's part of the front neckline um, again I'm just stretching it ever so slightly I'm holding it um, near that clip ever so slightly just enough to flatten it out and then finding the kind of center point of um, oops, sorry of both the neckline and the neckband laying it down flat checking that all my three edges are aligned which they are quite nicely and then doing that okay and again holding at the clip just stretching it out just so ever so slightly I can three see I've got my three layers here so my trick is just to do go go slow <laughs> go slow and steady okay it's no rush if it takes you 10 minutes to sew this neckband that's no big deal like it's no race so always making sure there's not like little bits that are tucked up because that could end up in a hole just stretching it out just to the point where things are lying flat oops there we go okay still going so stretching out that neckline until the neckline is flat and that's going to mean the neck band is just ever so slightly taut. Okay. Next bit, same thing. Okay, here I am. Here's the shoulder, um, shoulder seam. And I'm just pulling, like, so I could see that this bottom layer was like sitting a little bit too far like in like that and so I just um, I did my stretchy thing and it was still sitting too far in so I just took my finger and just gently pulled it back just very slightly okay almost at that shoulder seam to be honest I usually unclip a little bit early there we go <clears throat> if your notches don't hit like just dead on it's really not a big deal because ultimately it's all about ease they're just kind of waypoints like to show you where the ease is going to be i can feel there's a lump under there but that's not a big deal because i'm gonna flatten it out before i get there it's another reason to not cut your notches too huge um is because you don't want there to still be a notch after you've sewn the seam okay here i am almost back at the beginning obviously to get onto the beginning the start of the surgery you have to kind of swoop in so what I do is I just try and um, even it out by like going straight along once my knife hits um, about you know where the um, already sewn edges and then I kind of just like jag it out to the side like that okay clip it off <laughs> we check it to make sure we don't have any holes or anything. Okay, great. So that's looking really good. You can see there's a bit of puckering there. That's not a big deal. Okay, it's not a big deal at all because it will press out and we're going to top stitch it. So I'll take you back to my iron now. Okay, so I've got it sitting on my tailor's ham, which is 100% not necessary. But I just thought it would be nice for you to see how it will sit on a body. I've got that um, seam flipped down. Okay, and then I'm going to take my iron with heaps of steam. I think it's turned itself off a little bit. Heaps of steam iron, come on. <laughs> Struggling, I think it's bringing it back to the boil again. Anyway. Okay. Um, I would use a press cloth on that because you can see it's kind of marking here. Um, I'll show you on a sleeve board. Obviously, you just can do this over the end of your ironing board as well, but... Um, just um, to show you so you can actually see so I just pop it over the end of like you know the ironing board or um, a rolled up towel or here's a sleeve board and I'm just gonna oh that's better that's more like steam okay press it okay again you can see that mine is uh, pressing um, what I'm trying to say mine is I don't know what it's gonna say <laughs> oh yeah it's marking that's what I was gonna 
trying to say, okay? When you're um, arranging it on your ironing board, you want to keep it curved because it's a curved seam. You know, you can see a little bit, see how there's, now it's kind of like waving a little bit. This is just, that's just a function of the fact that I'm not using a ham. It's, I'm using this very, very hard um, sleeve board. It's really not the world's best sleeve board, but what can you do? So, that's why we're using my ham. So I'm just making sure that I'm pressing that neckline down the next thing. Okay. So give it a good press, lots of steam. And then, oops, I put it on, on the ham, like it's on a body. So that is like a lovely finish there, um, just as it is, but I think it's a even better finish if you top stitch it. You can certainly like leave it like that, it's no problem. Um, personally, I don't like the way this um, seam flaps about. I think it's um, nicer to top stitch it. So I'll show you some options for top stitching. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna show you is just um, a zigzag. Um, and I do this really often. I'm gonna do it in a contrasting thread. So, you know, it's gonna not look quite as pretty as if, um, if you were doing it um, not with a contrasting thread, <laughs> if you were doing it with a matching thread. Um, I've got my zigzag um, width set on about four and my length at about two and a half. And um, on this presser foot, I like to kind of run this inner side along the neckline. This is just like a little sample that I've done with a curved neckline so you can see. And um, I'm just, I'm not really stretching it, I'm just pulling it so it sits totally flat. Oops, doesn't want to get started. I'm going to just pull it from the back. So I'm just, um, if you have a walking foot, that is really helpful in this instance. Um, but you can definitely do it without, and just, it was just a bit hard to get started there. Perfectly, you can see it's a bit dodgy there. Um, I just pulled it by this tail. You would just, if you were doing that uh, for yourself, um, if you use a walking foot or if you don't have a walking foot, which not everyone has, um, just make sure you just gently tug it to get it going. At least it's easy to unpick if you need to. So anyway, I think that's a really a nice finish. Um, and I like that. I do that um, on a lot of them. I did it always before I got a cover stitch. And the inside, you can see it just holds it down flat and it just makes it nicer to wear. Um, I'm going to find my twin needle and show you um, how that goes. Okay, so I have my twin needle in there. So basically what you're going to do is just um, use two thread spools. Um, if you have a tension disc at the top of your um, machine, then you're going to have one spool going on either side of that. Um, and then thread it down and um, just have one thread going through each needle. And so what happens is it looks a bit like a cover stitch. It has like straight stitch on one side and then the bobbin actually kind of magically goes between them. There is a high degree of tunneling. You can see this is called tunneling where it forms like a little arch here. So you have to play with tension and I just wanted to show you that. So... I just was playing with my upper tension. I have it loosened quite a lot. Actually, that did it. I, when I loosened it um, even more, it um, made it flat. Um, I do not like to mess with my bottom tension if I can possibly help it, but you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Now, when I do the twin needle or a cover stitch finish on a neckband, I like to have that right needle <laughs> stitch in the ditch. You don't have to do that, but I think it looks really good uh, because then you can just see one row of stitching. Oops. 
oops, as I proceed to mess that up. Hold on. There we go. Bit of pressure doing it on camera. Of course, it's contrasting through it, so it's not going to look quite as... Uh, fancy as it fell off the <laughs> fell, off, fell off it a little bit at the beginning okay don't do that um but it will look if you've got a matching thread it will look super nice um or of course you can just do a classic um just you know two rows of um below there i'm just pulling that out i just actually just yanked that bobbin thread out uh which is super convenient and then you can just out the cover stitch and uh, not cover stitch sorry twin needle just like that and I'll show you what it looks like if you um, just sew it um, just below make sure that you do not have it set on zigzag because you'll break your needles That turned out hopefully well. Okay, that's also a nice finish too. So that's what it would look like if you either cover stitch it um, below or um, use the twin needle. Again, it like makes this sit really nice and smooth. So that's why I like it. Uh, the final one is on um, a cover stitch. So I'll pop you over to my cover stitch. Okay, so when I'm cover stitching, I like to turn the garment inside out and then cover stitch uh, from the right side. Um, my cover stitch um, has this little part of the foot like right here, like, and um, you know, if I'm, I'm, if I'm doing the cover stitch like below like that, then I would run um, this bit like along this seam line here and it kind of keeps it equidistant um, but I want to try and stitch in the ditch or slightly above even so where are we oh it's all getting stuck on my feed dogs here we go okay so I'm just stretching it out to where it is flat I don't skip any stitches. My cover stitch sometimes it skips stitches if I go too fast over uneven bits. Oops, here I am going too fast. It might have skipped there, let's see. So it's taut. Potentially skip some stitches there. I'm just going to go and um, I like to clip my threads for where, where I started. Before I get back there, skip the few here. I'm just going to make sure that I um, overlap it. Oops, wasn't very good. So you can see that's 
a pretty nice finish. Um, anyway, so I hope that that was helpful showing you um, how to install this neckband. Um, see how nice and flat it's sitting now. Um, and also some options for top stitching it down. I uh, hope that was helpful and hope you're having a good day.